Warning, the following video contains content intended for older audiences, mainly teens and adults. Viewer discretion is advised. Thank you for your cooperation. Happy Little Games Any fan of my channel will know how much I love a rock-solid beat-em-up. I've said it before and I'll say it again, there is nothing better than going into the arcade and playing a co-op game of Final Fight or Double Dragon. Technos and Capcom both put out some stellar beat-em-ups, but the game that gave Konami the moniker of the King of Schwing was Crime Fighters. This action-packed, four-player spectacular melded elements of Double Dragon, Final Fight, and Horn Dog Hounds into one fun game. What was the shocking content that was removed from the North American release of this game? So let's get ready to rumble, because this is the history of Crime Fighters and Vendetta. The year is 1990 and Konami is looking to cash in on the beat-em-up craze. Thanks to hits such as Double Dragon and Final Fight, arcade goers were gobbling up new games like a crack addict at a crack house. Konami had released another four-player simultaneous arcade title back in 1988, which was the pro wrestling game The Main Event. Although the game used a purely fictional roster, just by looking at it, you can clearly tell who each wrestler is based on. How the company was never sued, I'll never know. Anyway, Konami director Sotaru Akimoto, who had previously worked on such classics as Contra, and Aliens, felt they should take another stab at the genre which was started back in 1989 with Crime Fighters. Crime Fighters was released by Konami in 1989. As the story goes, a mysterious entity known as the Fat Toad has kidnapped a number of girls. This is all the motivation you need to get out there and kick some tail. This game came in a dedicated four-player cabinet, although later on they did release a two-player only version as well. The game was heavily inspired by Final Fight and the 1979 movie The Warriors, but with the gameplay cranked up to 11. When the game starts up, you'll notice a number next to your name instead of a traditional health bar. This will slowly go down one notch at a time similar to the arcade game Gauntlet. The more damage you take, the faster it depletes. The two-player version of the game does offer a life bar instead of the constantly decreasing numbered health. You have a dedicated button for punching and one for kicking. Pressing both buttons together will unleash a flying attack. After throwing a couple of punches at your opponent, it is possible to throw him over your shoulder. Once your opponent is down for the count, you can walk up to him and kick the living snot out of him. On certain enemies, you will grab their head and deliver some brutal knee shots right to the old noggin. It's also possible to knee your opponent in the family jewels, which leaves them writhing in agony. This move does not work on larger enemies, nor the women, whom you can't grab at all. There are various weapons scattered throughout the levels, such as switchblades, drain pipes, and guns. Yes, that's right. As if the game wasn't already violent enough, you can now bust a cap on those nefarious gang members. How sweet it is. Just a side note, if you are playing in the four-player cabinet, there is limited ammunition available for the gun. If you're playing in the two-player cabinet, the ammunition is unlimited. It's also possible to slam your opponents up against the wall, similar to the move seen in Konami's later action title, Batman Returns, for the Super Nintendo. The game takes place across eight stages, such as the subway station,
Inside the Train. The Town. The Construction Site. On top of a building. The back alley. The harbor. And finally, the warehouse. Some of the bosses you encounter are Punk Rock Death, a guy with an axe who looks suspiciously like Jason Voorhees, A crazy biker who wields a chain. Another punk rock leather clad crazy person, only this time a chainsaw is his primary weapon. A guy with suspiciously long claws who could be a takeoff of Freddy Krueger. A giant boxer. An army dude who looks suspiciously like Guile from Street Fighter 2, although that game wouldn't be released for a couple of more years. And finally, a giant bodyguard for the Fat Toad. After you disperse of the bodyguard, the fat toad exits his limousine and begs for mercy. Mercy is not an option as you take out a gun and shoot him. If you don't have a gun, you can punch and kick him into submission. After this, a game over screen is shown with you surrounded by a bevy of beauties. You apologize for them being kidnapped, but then ask if they wouldn't mind you kidnapping them instead. He better hurry because it's possible they charge by the hour. After the credits roll, you are taken to an extra level where you fight all eight bosses at the same time. There was a bit of brief censorship involving a woman's buttocks. There is also some censoring when it came to the dogs and a certain biker, but I will delve more into that while discussing Vendetta. The buttocks in question involves a woman adjusting her bikini. I'm sure this popped many a boner across arcades everywhere. In typical Konami fashion, there is quite a bit of humor found throughout this game. For example, level 1 will see the billboard which asks, are you covered, showing a topless woman in a bikini which will break in half and fall on you if you walk underneath it. In level 3, standing in front of the strip club, you see a woman through the glass. If you get too close, you'll press your face against the window to get a better look. At this point, the door will swing open violently and you will be squashed against the wall as flat as a pancake. Level 4 has a steamroller which you are driven over, it will also flatten you like a pancake. 
I really enjoyed this game, especially in the chaotic four-player mode. This was the perfect groundwork that the developers were looking to build upon when they were developing the sequel, Vendetta. Vendetta was released in 1991 by Konami. As I mentioned, director Satoru Akimoto was eager to try another side-scrolling beat-em-up and felt that the original Crime Fighters would be the perfect place to start. The original game was pretty successful for the company, although no home conversions were ever released. Because it was a four-player simultaneous game, it did generate a lot of revenue. Mr. Akimoto wanted everything from the movesets, to the characters, and to the weapons to be bigger and bolder. He gave each character their own unique attributes and movesets which really helps the replay value. In certain regions, the game was called Crime Fighters 2, but here in America, it was released as a standalone title with no connections to the previous game. As the story goes, the street tough gang known as the Cobras has had one of their members kidnapped. You have to rescue Katie Cutie who has been taken by the Dead End Gang as a way to lure the rest of the Cobras into a trap. The leader of the gang, Faust, has let you know that they have kidnapped a chick, and that if you want her back, you will know exactly where to go. It's up to you and your band of cohorts to rescue your partner in crime and save the day. You have your choice of four fighters, including Blood, who is a former boxer, Hawk, who is a former pro wrestler and looks just a little bit like Hulk Hogan, Boomer, who is a former martial artist, and Sledge, who is ex-military and looks quite a bit like Mr. T. Each character does have their own unique moves, which makes the game much more enjoyable than the previous one. Instead of the numbered meter found in the four-player version of Crime Fighters, it's now been replaced with a traditional health bar at the top. The controls are very similar to the first game with you having a dedicated punch button and a dedicated kick button. You can unleash Flying Fury by pressing both the punch button and kick button together. If you get close to your enemy and give him a good smack, you can grab him and toss him over your shoulder wiping out any other enemies who are nearby. It's also possible to grab your opponent in a headlock and knee him in the face. It is possible to grab an enemy from behind and do a special move. After knocking the enemy off their feet, you can walk up to them and kick the heck out of them just like in the previous game. It's also possible for the enemies to lay into you while you are knocked down on the ground, but you can get up quicker by pressing the punch and kick buttons while shaking the joystick repeatedly. Slamming your opponents up against the wall makes its welcome return and it's oh so satisfying watching the interactive backgrounds break apart. The weapons have also been given a significant upgrade which now includes spiked clubs, iron chains, whips, knives, wooden crates, iron bins which will actually keep rolling until it hits something, shotguns, bricks, bottles, and Molotov cocktails. The enemy assortment has been moved up a notch and those vicious rabid enemy dogs are also back. They are also a bit more frisky in certain versions, but I'll get to that in just a moment. There are five levels in the game which pales in comparison to eight found in the original, but they are a lot longer. <laughs> These levels include the Dead End Streets. A construction site. The alleys. The waterfront. And 
and the slums. There are various obstacles throughout the game that can cause you or your opponent damage such as the construction stage where you can cause girders or scaffolding to fall on your opponent. The game has some nice cutscenes in between each stage giving you an up and close personal look at all of the scum and villainy on display. The bosses you will encounter are Buzzsaw Bravado, Yo Asugi, The Missing Link, who looks a lot like wrestler Bruiser Brody. The Rude Brothers. Cruel Kurt. and the leader of the Dead End Gang, Faust. You. After Faust is defeated, you are reunited with Katie while a short text scrolls on the screen. Thanks to you! Dead End City has been liberated and while the Cobras were making their way back home, previous enemies who had been defeated have somehow been revived and you have to take them on all at once in a sort of, no pun intended, final fight. If you are successful in defeating the various baddies, a nice ending sequence is shown while beautiful music plays. The game was censored in a couple of spots when it was released outside of Asia. If you have any little kids in the room, I suggest they leave for a couple of minutes while I discuss this. Three, two, one, go. There is no other way to put this nicely, so I'll just come right out and say it. There is a whole lot of humping going on. One of the first things you notice if you are playing the Japanese version is on certain levels, a rather large imposing man dressed in leather comes out and will start to dry hump you and lick your face at the same time. Uh. The man even lets out a moan while he is doing it. Not only is this a bit shocking the first time you see it, but it also takes health away. Talk about a way to go. <sighs> These horny toads will sometimes get so worked up they will do the nasty with a light pole at the bottom of the screen. If they manage to knock you off your feet, they will jump your bones and give you the old licky licky while you desperately try to make it back to your feet. As if that wasn't odd enough, here come the dogs. Now I've played a lot of games in my life and I can finally say I have been virtually used and abused by man's best friend. The dog will see one of your sexy legs and lock himself onto it and let out a howl while he is doing it. Gee, I can't believe this didn't make it into the American version. In addition to the fair amount of dry humping going on, we also get our fair share of vomiting so be warned. Similar to Crime Fighters, there were no home conversions for this game. It was recently released for the PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch. I have always enjoyed these two games, especially Vendetta. The different characters, 
larger than life graphics and weapons really put it over the top for me. The best way to play it is with four players, but even the single player experience is a lot of fun. If you've never had a chance to experience this game for yourself and don't mind the occasional horn dog hound, give this game a shot. You'll be glad you did. If you like everything else retro not related to video games, check out my other channel, Patman QC History of Everything Retro. So far, I've done videos on toys, cartoons, lunchboxes, and more. If you enjoyed this video or any of my content, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, if you would consider supporting me on Patreon, I really would appreciate it. Check the link below. Thank you all so much for watching.